I'm Matt Rendell, CEO and co-founder of ClearPath Robotics. What makes Waterloo an attractive place to do business? Um, and what are some of its strengths and perhaps areas of improvement? The Waterloo region, I think, is such a great place to start a business and operate a business um, for, for a number of reasons. But I, I would start by highlighting what the University of Waterloo brings to the ecosystem. There's a tremendous talent pool available through the University of Waterloo. It's one of the top technical institutes in North America. The cooperative education program that they have there is unique in, in the breadth and depth of experience that all of its technical programs offer. And so the graduates from the program are really unlike any other school that we've had experience with. And, and so being next door to the University of Waterloo and if you talk to any business leader, availability of great talent is often going to come up as a, a key challenge. And so to have this um, really, really um, valuable and proven partnership for talent next door is, is unlike anything else. And so that, that for me is one of the most important parts of starting a company in the region. And, and so I would say then the strengths of the Waterloo region really are its people. And when you look at a knowledge economy and technology-based innovation-centric businesses, the people power the innovation and the technology. So having the University of Waterloo produce such remarkable talent creates a very powerful strength for the region and the companies that choose to operate here. Um, I think in terms of what the region could do better, um, well, I, I wish we did a better job at marketing how great the region is. You know, there, there's lots of really, really amazing things happening in the Waterloo region and doing a great job at telling the world about it is something that is uh, not always our, our first focus. Um, and then secondly, I'd probably say solving the, the high speed transportation problem would be incredibly impactful for the region, connecting Waterloo to Toronto with high frequency, high speed, reliable public transportation would be probably the single most impactful um, public initiative or infrastructure initiative that, that comes to mind. What do you think are, you know, Waterloo's best attributes to foreign investors? The attributes for a foreign investor, I, I would say, Oh, there's so many. Um, I, I would start by highlighting proximity to the United States as a key market without being in the United States. And as a Canadian entity, you take advantage of a tremendous number of government programs that allow and support innovation to happen in a very efficient and effective manner, coupled with the Canadian dollar, I think if you're a foreign investor looking to deploy your dollars in an, in an efficient and effective manner, you gain a tremendous amount of leverage with the Canadian dollar. But culturally and from a, a business perspective, we behave and, and act like many other East Coast United States companies. So you're able to access the market that the United States presents with, um, with with great ease uh, while still taking advantage of initiatives and support structures that just simply don't exist in the United States. That would be the, the first and, and most immediate one uh, to highlight. And then second, I would say, again, back to my earlier point about the role that people play in creating um, a really important and impactful business the immigration policies in Canada allow you to set up a home base in Kitchener-Waterloo, for instance, but really effectively pull from a global talent pool to cultivate that talent ecosystem even further in the region. And you contrast that against some of the immigration policies that exist in the United States, you're just not able to get the talent. And if I relate that to my business and our particular experiences and challenges, 
we work in, in the domain of autonomous systems, and that's a very um, specialized, highly specialized discipline. And the talent pool of autonomous systems engineers is dispersed globally. And there's a very small number of highly capable autonomous systems engineers coming from specific technical institutes everywhere in the world. And just the nature of an autonomous system, you really need to be hands on the actual vehicle that's driving itself. So having a distributed workforce globally works in a lot of ways, um, but there's often a need to bring everybody together for key milestones in the development process and being able to do that effectively in Canada is a very um, valuable thing. What are some of the incentives in place uh, in your community, in Waterloo in particular, uh, in the region, um, to support entrepreneurs or newcomers? The federal and provincial governments create programs that make it highly attractive for foreign direct investment in Ontario. Um, and when you look at the, the mid-sized cities that exist inside of Ontario, at the municipal level, obviously you're dealing with smaller budgets than provincial or federal and the ability to offer major um, uh, programs is not the same. And so it, I would shift it more to what are the markers in a mid-sized city that make a region more or less attractive to somebody trying to select from a list of mid-sized cities within a region that federal and provincial interests have um, attracted attention to. And so when you look at the Waterloo region and, and even before COVID, it straddles a really interesting balance of the amenities of a big city with the cost of living and the space of a smaller community. And so from a cost of living, uh, um, a quality of life, adjusted for cost of living perspective, you end up with a tremendous value proposition, right? If I reflect back on when we were starting the company, we didn't take a salary for the first couple of years. And trying to do that in Toronto, I think would have been, uh, you know, a substantially harder proposition for us. It wasn't without its own challenges here, but I think it would have been a non-starter in Toronto. What are some of the supports um, that the ecosystem in Waterloo and perhaps even at the federal level have put in place to support the ecosystem through COVID and also to continue attracting investors? At the municipal level, advocating for support from the provincial and federal interests to make sure that really, really great companies like ClearPath Robotics come out of the COVID blip on the radar stronger. There are so many great companies that got caught off guard by this and need the support from the government more than ever in order to ensure they have the, the fortitude to get out the other side of it. And so there was a lot of work in the early days that um, organizations like Communitech did to advocate for increasing support at the provincial and federal level getting programs initialized urgently to support startup and scale up businesses through the COVID process. And that advocacy really is only possible because they represent such a large base of the tech community. And, and so everyone came together really, I think as one voice to say, Hey, this is going to be a really make or break decision point in the Canadian tech um, history line, what are we going to do about it? There are small and medium sized businesses that we need to help. And uh, so, for example, we were in the process of raising, um, uh, raising a round of investment right as COVID hit and EDC stepped up with a matching program. And I think we were the first company to receive funding through the EDC investment co-invest uh, co program. And so EDC put $5 million into our company and I'm tremendously grateful for that. That's a very uh, quantified um, 
and practical example of, of how federal government stepped up to support an important business in the tech ecosystem. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. 